Loch Derrick and what it is and what it's known to people here and what it was based on. Um, it was also known as where St. Patrick went to do his penance. You know, but when St. Patrick was becoming a Christian, he started off life obviously as a slave here and but returned when he was, you know, he had earned his freedom, but he did return to bring Christianity. But before that, before he felt he could preach the word of God, he felt he had to purge for his sins. And he went to Loch Derrick. Now, I believe now he went to Loch Derrick because that's where he went to test himself. So it's known as the uh, uh, St. Patrick's Purgatory. Uh, well, it's one of the names for it. Like, So he went there to test himself against evil. I'm sure there was probably something absolutely horrendous there. I'm not going to... Do, but you've got to remember, you're also talking uh, about a very primitive uh, people describing this. Mm -hmm. And probably to, and, to and, you know, indicate how much fear they felt, in words, maybe in words... That was able to describe or put across the fear that they felt that this, you know, maybe, I don't know. I don't know, but I would imagine it was probably something that terrified them. And this was how they described it. You know, that's what I would imagine. So you've always got to remember when you hear things like that, that are being told maybe about a thousand years ago, you're ta talking about a very primitive, uneducated people who, let's face it, would have thought a torch was, you know, witchcraft. But it's also, it's not just, it's not restricted to Catholic religion, religions from all over the world. Go to Loch Derg. There's only it's, there's nowhere else in the world like it. It's the only place that does this kind of penance, and it is it really is quite severe. You can believe the amount of pensioners that do it. I mean, they're pretty to shame, really, when you think about it. But um, it's you go out there and you don't sleep the first night. You fast, and uh, so that you're not susceptible to anything. You know that you're aware of everything that's going on, and it's all spent in either meditation or prayer, depending on what denomination you're. And the second day then, I think you can have tea and you get to sleep the second day. There's something definitely there. If, you know, in St. Patrick, an awful lot that's attributed to St. Patrick, I'd say, is myth and folklore. But he was a living, breathing man. And he was a saint. And he did do this. He did go out to Loch Derrick. And this is where he went to fight evil. This was his doing his penance out there. So, I mean, there's a reason for that. There's a reason for the church filling in that, you know, that cave and building the church on top of it and banished the snakes into the hole and I've also heard in other things that the snakes symbolically represent the druid Celts of the Tuatha de Danann. The Tuatha de Danann were this magical race of people that arrived from the sea, the mists of the sea and they brought music and magic and fire and uh, all sorts of things that the people here found to be just oh my god this mystical magical people and then eventually when they when the land was become overrun by the people they did disappeared back into the mist of the sea uh there were sailors at the time but it, they did apparently arrive in tory they're supposed to have arrived in different parts of ireland they would have brought fire it would have been the likes of the poets and the artists and the musicians and the magicians and the you know illusionists that weren't warriors that weren't fighting that weren't part of these battles that were going on you know in arabia you know, they might not have been warriors in their own country, but they still would have been able to sort of con conquer any people here. They would have much advantage. They would have had weapons. They would have had a fire. They would have had this. People here wouldn't have had that. Um, did Patrick uh, banish all the snakes from Ireland? I don't know. Maybe he banished a few. Maybe there was a few. And there used to be bears here. There used to be wolves here. They're all gone as well. You know, who's to say that, you know, somebody didn't, I mean, you know, who's to say they didn't come in boats? You do you, know. Do you think it's a metaphor for something? Snakes? No, I, I, I actually think it could have happened on a smaller scale. And the story grown on a larger scale. I, you know, I, I do quite believe it. Because when you think some of the things that um, are attributed to Colin Kill or St. Columba, I mean, really, they, they're proper Harry Potter magic when you think of some of the things that are attributed. But they were real living, breathing men that done extraordinary things and are still remembered. But you've got to remember, very primitive people are looking and listening and maybe hearing one story and it's grown. You know, a lot of these stories were passed down for hundreds of years before they were written down. It didn't mean that they were devil worshippers or the pagans doesn't, it doesn't mean that. The Druids didn't, you know, it was just a different form. Of, it was just literally living off the land, with the land, reading the land, you know. Believed in too many deities, though. 
but you know, became a key, uh, you know became educated as the years went on. I believe all of these myths and legends are based on a grain of truth. There's no records. There just is word that that's where that that was known to be a place of demons, I suppose, or whatever. And that's why Saint Patrick decided that's where he would go to prove to God that he was worthy. You know, and it was to expose himself to that. Argata, center of the world, Shambhalaya. The Hollow Earth theory is this theory, and it's many. It's in loads of books like uh, Journey to the Center of the Earth, Jules Verne. I don't believe that for a second. Well, really? I don't think I don't think scientifically it's possible. You know, not with the amount of gases, for instance, that would be at the center of the Earth. But I know there are big pockets. There are big caves and underground pockets all over the world. I mean, they can tell you that there was glaciers underground in Mars. So I think they can tell you what's underground here. Quite a lot more cults in Ireland than I would have ever believed when I first heard about it. And I remember talking to people afterwards and going, do you know about that? And going, oh, God. Then, oh, God, aye, there's one up in our draw. It's been up there for years. You get them in the caves up there. And, of course, we all decided one night at a party, we're going down to these caves. Couldn't go down during the day when there's nothing happening. We go down at night. Are we over the beach and there's not a peep? And then you go in and you find the remains of goats or sheep or whatever that they've used. I don't know if they're still there now, but they were then. So de And there was definitely something very freaky and very weird. Yes, I have heard of it. I heard about it in, in Cave Hill in Belfast. I believe there was a few caught there in different times in the early 80s and things like that. But it was, um, surprisingly enough, it's not groups of hippies or groups of drug users. It's usually doctors, solicitors, usually well-respected you know, highly placed people say? in the community, like, you know. More times than not, when you first do the glass, it's always a negative spirit that comes mm. in. Someone, that's content, not, someone like, that's content and moved on really has no reason to hang about and say anything to you. you know, yeah, they really you can don't. still call them. And you like, can, but Usually but when we're doing that, we're not chatting to anyone. I haven't done it in years, but it's usually our guides. We'll just want to talk to our guides. Mm. And we don't actually talk to anyone else, but even to try and just like get into them because like, always ask, are they from the light? And they can't. That's the other. She says that's like a universal law. Always yeah. stay. Always stay away from the shadows. Mm. Always stay away from the shadows. And if you notice every room, every room I have now is every corner is always lit up at some stage. Mm -hmm. I'm never. You know, I don't have my just dark over there now, but I've usually got more candles lit. But I've always. I, I just that's always stuck in my head from being very young. Stay away from the shadows. I say really protect yourself before you go to any to do any of these things i mean i i couldn't emphasize that enough that's an energy you don't want to that is just an energy you don't want to fuck with 